Chapter 4.10 National Strategic Security Before we can abolish war, we need to understand it. Peter Turchin, Reference 22 Chapter 4.10.1 Modeling How Modern Agrarian Society Controls Its Resources It is possible to model warfare as a resource control protocol. Section 4.5 to 4.7 discuss the differences between abstract power and physical power-based resource control systems. These sections discuss how agrarian society attempts to use abstract power to replace physical power. The word attempt was emphasized because abstract power-based resource control structures clearly tend to break down. If abstract power functioned properly as the basis for managing resources, there wouldn't be so many physical conflicts. The fact that wars break out suggests that abstract power isn't the only thing that humans use to manage their resources, so we need to update our model. To produce a more accurate model to describe how agrarian society manages their resources, it is necessary to account for their use of physical power competitions i.e. warfare. This can be accomplished by creating a resource control structure model which incorporates both abstract power and physical power. To that end, a hybrid resource control model has been provided in Figure 52. This model accounts for the fact that agrarian society attempts to use abstract power to manage the state of ownership and chain of custody of their resources, but routinely reverts back to using physical power. And here we have figure 52, a more accurate model of the resource control structure adopted by modern society. And the top controller is physical power, expended watts. This model contains the same controllers as the previously described resource control models and combines them together in a single system, into a single system. Three control actions worth the reader's attention have been enumerated and highlighted in purple. The first control action is subscribe. As previously discussed, everyone tacitly subscribes to the control authority of physical power by virtue of the fact that nobody gets to unsubscribe from the influence of physical power. No matter what belief systems people adopt, and no matter how people choose to design their abstract power hierarchies, nobody who wields abstract power gets to unsubscribe from the authority of physical power. As previously explained, physical power is unsympathetic. It works the same regardless of whether or not people believe in it or sympathize with it. This means our presidential republics, semi-presidential republics, parliamentary republics, constitutional monarchies, semi-constitutional monarchies, absolute monarchies, or one-party states are all equally subordinate to physical power and equally incapable of escaping its impact. For these reasons, physical power is placed above abstract power in this control structure model. The second control action worth special attention is constrain, decentralize, enforce, legitimize. As discussed in this chapter, a primary value delivered function of warfare is that it allows people to physically constrain and decentralize abstract power. Warfighting is the reason why control authority over Earth's dry land has been divided across 195 different abstract power hierarchies, what we now call countries. The precise boundaries of these abstract power hierarchies have been adjusted many times over the past several thousand years, but the control authority over Earth's resources has always remained globally decentralized precisely because of physical power projection. In addition to physically constraining and decentralizing control authority over Earth's natural resources, Physical power projectors, i.e. militaries, also legitimize the abstract power wielded by abstract power projectors. This references the concepts presented in sections 4.5 and the example about how kings utilize the physical power projected by their knights to legitimize and convince people to believe in their own abstract power. By having 
Physical power projectors project physical power within the same context of the king's assertion of abstract power. The imaginary power wielded by the king is easier to misperceive as concretely real. Technically speaking, this is a false positive correlation between an abstract input produced by the human imagination and a physical sensory input produced by the power projector. Nevertheless, it works at legitimizing abstract power. As many societies have proven time and time again, through countless rebellions, revolutions, coup d'etats, kings are physically powerless in shared objective physical reality. All it takes to undermine the abstract power and control authority of anyone with abstract power is to simply, one, stop believing in their abstract power, or two, countervail the physical power of the king's physical power projectors, i.e. defeat the king's army, the people with real power. We know this process works because it is the reason why monarchies today are almost entirely ceremonial and have virtually no abstract power one major exception being the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The reason why most monarchies today are almost entirely ceremonial is because power projectors stop legitimizing their abstract power. The populations living under monarchies in the past got so fed up with the exploitation and abuse of their belief system that they one, stop believing in the king's imaginary abstract power, or Two, started projecting real power to countervail their monarch's army, thus delegitimizing the king's abstract power. If kings truly had the power they claimed to have, this would not have happened. But a series of revolutionary wars have made a very compelling case that kings do not have real power. They just have abstract power. For this reason, abstract power projectors have been placed in a lower and more subordinate position to physical power projectors in this model. The last enumerated control action is request enforcement legitimization. This is another tacit control action that is easy to explain using the same king and knight example. When a king orders his army to carry out his will, what he is really doing is asking physical power projectors to legitimize his abstract power. The same thing happens during virtually any form of physical enforcement. Physical power is superior to abstract power, which means physical power projectors are superior to abstract power projectors. Additionally, laws are only imaginary logical constraints, not physical constraints because imaginary constraints are demonstrably incapable of physically preventing anyone from doing anything. Laws must be physically legitimized using physical power. The request for physical legitimization and enforcement of abstract power is therefore implicit, not explicit, but nevertheless still a request. As many rulers have learned the hard way, over many acts of mutiny, physical power projectors can and often do choose to stop enforcing or legitimizing their ruler's abstract power. When this happens, the control authority that abstract power projectors have over people's resources disappears. Conversely, when abstract power projectors choose not to legitimize physical power projectors, the control authority of physical power projectors does not change. For this, and several other reasons, we know that abstract power projectors require the tacit permission of physical power projectors and not the other way around. This cold hard truth is backed by a well-recorded history of many rulers being physically overthrown.